Music of 365 Radio, 365 Sports, Greg Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke, Jack McKenzie, running the mothership, and Grayson Grunhafer joins us, Sikkim 365 recruiting analyst, and it was a busy week this week for Baylor. They picked up yet another name for the class of 2023. Grayson, first of all, how weird was it Wednesday for you not to have anybody at all that signed with Baylor? Yeah, I mean, it was a little weird, right, Smokey, because I think when you look at the class, they were pretty much filled up. And then the other kind of storyline was that they did get Alfonso Allen to commit in the month of January, but his, just his recruitment was so interesting because he signed and enrolled in the middle of January. So, uh, like you said, no signings um, on Wednesday, the last signing day. And it kind of goes back to what we've talked about before. As far as Baylor goes, this last signing day is usually pretty meaningless because most of their classes usually filled out. Um, they were only waiting on Kamari Terrell to make his decision. And, of course, he decided with Oregon. Uh, but outside of that, they weren't really recruiting anyone uh, when the second signing period came around. Yeah, Grayson, I thought it was I thought it was weird when I checked, you know, a couple feeds on different recruiting websites at about 1030 in the morning. And there are about four posts at 1030, which usually by 1030, you've got 90 percent of the day done. You're just waiting for a few hat ceremonies and there was nothing. But for Baylor and now as they move on to 2023, how do you see this uh, class shaping up with uh, positions of interest, uh, you know, things that they have to get that they're going after right now? Yeah, so, I mean, they're off to a really nice start. They already have nine commits. Of course, they got Mike Gifford uh, to commit. I'm sure we'll talk about him in a little bit. And, of course, Christian Brathwaite as well after the junior day, which he was there uh, in attendance for. So, up to nine commits. Uh, they're currently ranked number 14th in the country uh, rankings-wise. And that's without four of their prospects even having a ranking right now. So, they're doing a really nice job. They already have their quarterback solidified, which was a position they really had to address in this class. And then you kind of look around at the other positions they need. So I, I think cornerback is a position they definitely are going to have to look at. They have one committed with Jakeby and Rogers, uh, but they still have some more work to do there. I, I could see them taking anywhere from, you know, three, maybe four cornerbacks in this class. And that's to go along with potentially taking a transfer as well. So, that's definitely a position to keep an eye on. I would also say defensive line. Uh, they don't currently have a defensive line uh, prospect committed, uh, but I think they're definitely going to address that, probably take three defensive linemen, um, and they also probably have three spots open at linebacker as well, even with the addition of Christian Grassley, because uh, they still got to address the jack position, which is a position they need to build some more depth on. So you mentioned uh, their names a couple times now, Grayson, but in the last handful of days, Christian Brathwaite, the linebacker, and uh, also here most recently, wide receiver Micah Gifford uh, from Pflugerville. Uh, Weiss, uh, what can you tell us about those two and what their commitments mean? Yeah, so Christian Brathwaite is a cool one just because it continues that Cy Ranch to Baylor connection that's going on there. Uh, Baylor obviously has Drake Dabney, Romario Noel on the roster, uh, Bryce Simpson signed in the 2022 class, and now here you go, Christian Brathway uh, is committed as well. And they're still going after Ashton Porter, who's a big uh, four-star defensive end out of Cy Ranch. So they've really done a nice job there. And Brathway is just a, he's such an interesting prospect because, you know, he's 6'2", 225 pounds. And back when I saw him probably a year ago, right before he got the Baylor offer, so I guess a little more than a year ago, he looked like a guy that was poised to be, you know, potentially one of the best uh, linebackers in the entire country. I mean, he just looked so athletic, so explosive. Um, and he got some offers, Tennessee, Colorado, Texas Tech, Cal. Uh, but prior to the season, he got injured in the spring, and he wasn't even able to get cleared for contact till August. And so it really took a toll on his film this season. And so I think you're going to see him really become a riser uh, during his senior year, he's already a four-star, um, but I think he can go higher than that. I think his film will catch up to his ranking, and I think he's going to get better and better. So love this pickup for this staff, and he's been a priority since day one. So uh, that, that's a very big pickup. Now, the other one is really interesting. So Micah Gifford, he committed, and he committed without even visiting Baylor, at least during his recruitment visit. Or, or recruitment time. He's been to Baylor, though, because his brother Elijah is actually on the Baylor track team. Um, but Micah is a, a very good and lanky and 
skilled and fast prospect. He's about 6'3", 185 pounds, had 893 yards and 13 touchdowns this season, so showed high level of production. Uh, ran a 14.67 second 110-meter hurdle time as a sophomore, which is a tremendous time. So clearly a lot of speed. He's a strider. So you're going to see him down the sideline a lot, kind of in that type one Thornton role. I think in the Baylor offense, and I think the biggest thing about him is he's the first wide receiver commit since Baylor hired a uh, new wide receiver since Dallas Baker, the TV maker. Yeah, that was that didn't ha- that didn't take long. It, it surely did not take very long. I want to uh, to bring up Brayson McHenry. He's a walk on, preferred walk on. We know C.J. Rogers has already been in the building, a preferred walk on from Argyle. McHenry is out of Texas High, and I had a couple of comments from his coach Jerry Stanford, and he basically thought that you're going to see more quarterbacks do this now, kind of pick and choose based on, I guess, the way recruiting is. They have a full quarterback room. If you heard anything much about McHenry? Yeah, I actually talked to Brayson this week and posted notes about him today, actually. And uh, a really good kid, uh, Sean Bell, really likes him, likes his game. He thinks he's a really good fit for their offense. And, you know, I, I really like Brayson. I watch his film and I see a guy that, that's a very solid addition and probably a guy who honestly could have played group of plus football. So, um, I think he's a guy that you take and you see how he grows and builds. And I think the most important part about the walk-on spots at Baylor is that, you know, you want to make sure that that guy's a great cultural fit and he's the guy that will push the other guys to get better. And I think that's exactly what Brayson McHenry will do. Um, I'll also say, you know, statistically, he has some really good numbers. I mean, he ran for nearly 2,000 yards this year in 27 touchdowns. So, very athletic, uh, led his team to a 12-1 and season, fourth round of the playoffs. So, uh, clearly a winner and a guy that has all the attributes you're looking for. And I also want to mention they extended an offer for two Griffin Springs running back, Preston Alford, uh, who's another preferred walk-on offer. Um, and he's a Baylor legacy, grew up loving Baylor, totaled over 8,000 yards of total offense and like 81 touchdowns in high school. I mean, just an insane amount of production. Um they just the guys who also fits in with what they're trying to do with that walk-on program. So if they were able to land Preston along along with Bryson McHenry, I, I think they would honestly feel great about their walk-on. Grayson, all-star games going on. Uh, we're going to see the, the senior bowl here coming up. Had the uh, East-West game last night. Um, you know, didn't see much from the likes of a, a Treston Ebner, but uh, saw where Jalen Petrie's been voted the best uh, defensive secondary member at the uh, senior bowl Abram Smith, the best running back. Just your thoughts on, and I, I've written a bit about these guys, but uh, just your thoughts on what you've seen in this early buildup to the NFL draft for some of these Baylor prospects. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for me is that you're seeing Jalen Petrie and Abram Smith being total risers throughout this NFL draft process. I would also say that it seems like Xavier Newman-Johnson might actually give himself a shot at being drafted uh, if not, for sure, be a priority pickup, um, you know, at the end of the draft. And then I think Taekwon Thornton has put himself in a position where he could move up to being a day two pick, so maybe the second or third round, which would be tremendous. I mean, he just he performed really, really well at the Shrine Bowl. But um, just speaking on Petrie and Abram, you know, I think Abram will probably get drafted somewhere in, like, the fifth, sixth round. But I think he's going to go to a place that fits you know, where he's going to fit the wide zone team really well. And I think he's going to be extremely productive. So whoever gets him, if they get him that late in the draft, I think he's going to be a slam dunk pickup, especially for running backs who, you know, you need to kind of cycle in running backs as guys get older. So really like Abram. And then, of course, Jalen Petrie, you know, the way that I'm looking at this and the way that I'm hearing things on him, uh, don't be surprised if he somehow gets taken by a team that just absolutely loves him in that second, maybe third round. I just think, you know, there's a chance he creeps up into that second round just because someone falls in love with his game and with his film, which, I mean, as Baylor fans and people who watch Baylor a lot, I think everyone can pretty much agree he just absolutely flashed every time he was on the field this year, and I think an NFL team could find that really enticing. Yeah, it's been a good week because uh, I mentioned after last year, there wasn't much. And there's been years when they've had four, five, seven, eight, nine guys drafted as far as way back in the days, even of Grant Taft. But Petrie, 
Defensive secondary player, Abram, the running back, and there's video of these guys fundamentally sound as heck. And then Newman, we have on at 5 o'clock today, had a great week. And and Paul and Craig, we've had this discussion many times, Grayson, where he was just lost at times because of moving around or, you know, where he was going to play or they just weren't very good. And it's it's a great story about what Mateos did with him. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, what Mateos did with him and the fact that Peter Newman just, he never gave up. You know what I mean? It felt like there was a time in there where he absolutely could have just been like, I'm done. I'm walking away from football. He had injuries. He wasn't performing on the field. And he put it all together this year. So I'm really happy about that because that's just such a cool story with, you know, us following him as closely as we did over his career. I don't think many people understand kind of where he was at you know, kind of in the middle of his career at Baylor and then to turn that around, it's just it's been fantastic to watch. I'm extremely happy about the week that he just had. Thank you, Grayson. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Grayson Grunhey for Sikkim365.com recruiting analyst with us. The the uh, the Bear cast every Tuesday, and then, of course, he joins us on Fridays at 345 as well. I want to throw this out to the 